In 1902, in order to survive as a folk, the Boers had to surrender. Over half a century later, Afrikaners erected a memorial to their defeat. A fallen warrior lies with a dagger in his heart, but from the heart springs a powerful spirit of steel, a gleaming sword in his hand, representing the rise of a new triumphant Afrikaner nation. In victory, the British imposed a parliamentary system on South Africa, excluding most non-whites. But Afrikaners outnumbered those of British origin. They might win by the ballot what they had lost by the bullet if they could apply the motto of their lost republic, unity makes strength. In 1914, the National Party was formed to build Afrikaner unity against continuing British domination. Its leader, General Herzog, whose slogan was, South Africa first. Herzog had said, only one person has the right to be boss in South Africa, namely the Afrikaner. The people feel their own power. They have reached nation manhood, and they feel that Afrikaners and not strangers should rule the country. The devastation of the Anglo-Boer War had created a class of poor whites who scraped subsistence from the soil. Destitute, virtually their one remaining possession was their white skin. During the early decades of this century, drought and soil erosion drove these poor white Afrikaners off their land into the cities they looked upon as the devil's own, seeking the very manual jobs they had despised as fit only for blacks. This mass migration became known as the second great trek. But in the cities, Afrikaners were strangers in their own country. South Africa's economic strength lay in her mines, diamonds, gold, coal, iron ore, and the mines were British owned. White workers, called civilized labor, had always been paid more than blacks and had all the best jobs. The myth of racial superiority paid off in hard cash. But in 1921, the price of gold fell. Mine owners said they had to cut costs by employing cheaper blacks in jobs reserved for whites only. The white miners, terrified by what they called the black peril, seized the British mines. Their slogan was, workers of the world unite to keep South Africa white. the revolt. The strikers were bombed, shelled, and machine gunned into submission. More than 200 whites died. Four of the rebellion's leaders went to the gallows singing the red flag. The white miners had been broken. But within two years, white workers voted General Herzog into power. Herzog promised protection against both British capitalists and competition from blacks.